done and uh, our, our council is all back here, I think, for one o'clock. And if you're ready to go, we'll, uh, you, you can begin. Just one second, Molly. We uh, just waiting for that uh, uh, live can... link to get going. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, that's uh, my bad. And uh, our, our council. There, you're good to go. All right, Dan, are you uh, ready to the go? Mic, the, mic, the mic is mine. I, I the am. mic is yours. Thank you. Hi, hi Council. Um, yeah, I, I'm just on the phone, obviously, so I can't see you, but uh, hello to everybody and hope you're all, all doing well, keeping, keeping safe in this, in this bizarre time. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, just, uh, yeah, so sent a letter um, a couple days ago uh, through, through staff um, re related to a request that, that we've made for uh, slight relaxation in property tax on the, the Brook Solar 2 project. And um, I'll probably just go ahead and summarize kind of the key points from that letter and um, look forward to any discussion or feedback and open to questions. Um, so, so obviously, um, I'm sure you're all aware, um, having been sort of part of the decision-making process, that Elemental is developing the 26.5 megawatt AC Brook Solar 2 project, an expansion of our adjacent Brook Solar project. Um, the project's fully permitted both from uh, the, through the AEC, um, having obtained our permit earlier in the year, and then through the development permit obtained uh, just last month. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're effectively sort of shovel ready stage um, up for the project and then looking to break ground as soon as, as this fall. Um, and, and the projects, uh, you know, roughly a, a $50 million investment um, that we're hoping to make. Um, and really, sort of what I highlighted the letter is just the competitive landscape um, right now is, um, you know, we're, we're in the process of, of seeking, as many developers are, is to seeking to obtain a power purchase agreement for the project. Um, so that's, you know, typically obtained um, like our Brook Solar project through a, a corporate power purchase agreement or, um, as you may have recalled from a couple of years ago, um, you know, there was gov there's some government procurements that have happened in the past and potentially more going forward. Um, each, of, each, each of those are typically run through sort of an auction style process. And to date, we've you know, sort of been very close, but haven't yet obtained a power purchase agreement for the, for the site. And part of the, the reason for the ask on property tax relaxation is just to help make the project you know, sort of even more competitive as we, as we look to sort of solidify offtake for it. Um, you know, I think things have evolved quite rapidly in this space and, and solar and just renewable energy generation um, in general in Alberta has become quite competitive um, over the last few years. Um, speaking of solar, uh, when, when the Brooks Solar Project was, you know, sort of, you know, when we came through, through, through last time for approval on the first one, um, you know, that was the only AUC permitted solar project in the province. Now there's, now there's dozens. And, and we're all sort of vying for the same opportunities. And, and obviously just with the, the sort of COVID-19 impacts on, on just the economy and the ability to do business, those, those, econ those opportunities have, have sort of even become more competitive just with a couple of them dropping off. So just wanted to give that context um, in, in, in asking for this relaxation. Um, and, and, you know, really what we're asking for is outlined in the letter. Um, you know, open to discussing, but um, try to come up with a structure that could be seen as as both fair for the county um, and and provide still for a, a great revenue base for the county, and and also sort of allow the project to to be sort of as, as competitive as it can be and make some kind of meaningful impact on on the economics of the site. Um, so, so what we outlined, I mean, I can I maybe just go through um, in the, what we sort of present in the letter would be a, a 20 percent reduction uh, in the municipal components of the mill rate over the life of the project. Um, you know, and 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 really, um, you know, what would be as I said, what we're looking to do here is is get this project, you know, sort of green lit as soon as we can, and start the sort of construction process and ultimately operations process and and the sort of benefits that come with that. Um, you know, as we highlighted in, in the in the letter that, you know, the Brooks Solar site 
brought a lot of benefits uh, to the community and, and was, a, I, I think, a great sort of boon to, to, to the local economy. Um, employed about 100 people at peak construction, um, brought from our, from our math about four and a half million dollars of direct impact uh, to the economy within the county and, and about seven million within Alberta. And we, and we really see that, um, you know, the, the second project being even slightly larger would be sort of similar or more benefit um, coming in. And uh, yeah, so I, I mean, you know, really we're, we're hoping to, to, to have a discussion about this and, and um, you know, really would, would make an impact on, on the project's economics and competitiveness. And, and uh, yeah, look forward to hearing sort of any questions or, or feedback you might have. Thanks, Dan. Questions from anyone? Kelly. Hi, Dan. Um, not sure if why it's on, but uh, he will have heard me said this before. Uh, I'm just wondering if um, you have um, approached or considered approaching the city of Brooks for um, some benefits. You um, chose to name the project Burke Solar, and so um, the promotion of the area went to the city of Brooks and continues to. So um, where are you on that conversation? That's a good question. Thank you. Uh, we hadn't approached the city of Brooks, and primarily that was because we were we were sort of thinking it from the the taxation perspective. Um, it's a good suggestion, and certainly would take that away. And uh, I mean, we certainly have had a dialogue with Brooks over the years, but uh, just given that it's not technically within their jurisdiction, um, hasn't been a topic that's come up. That being said, you make a very good point that we're aware of that <laughs> it's uh, it is named after Brooks, and that and that's something that we. I, you know, frankly, we inherited with the first project, um, and you know, the second project we is I don't want to say it's a placeholder name, but um, it's not to say that we've sort of definitively will be naming it this for the for the duration of the project life. So um, I appreciate the the sort of comment and and hope that question um, or that answer sort of um, is satisfactory for your question as to where we're at. Brian? Hi Dan, it's Brian Dijon here. I was, um, my question is in regards to, were you aware of the tax implications before you asked for a development permit or, um, or worked on this site as far as your long-term planning? I mean, that alludes basically directly to your question and I guess the, the reason I'm asking it is I, I'm always curious when somebody is willing to develop a site and then comes for uh, tax relief after the fact, uh, whether it's a consideration or not. Thank you. Yeah, we were aware. I mean, we're certainly aware of, of the sort of property taxation levels. I'd say, you know, not just at the development permit stage, but, you know, broadly speaking, you know, since having the first project, I mean, um, and seeing sort of seeing the the sort of tax bills as they come in um to be honest I, it, it, it's not like it wasn't like a specific strategic sequence of events um i think probably when we spoke to you you know six weeks ago or whatever it may have been um at that time we actually had options we thought were more imminent uh, with respect to ppas um and so it may not have been as top of mind for that reason um but so so yeah just to answer your question yes certainly we were aware of taxation levels and and um at that time and um but but to sort of the other point is it wasn't sort of a strategic timing decision to, to do one before the other Thanks. Claire oh shoot Clarence 
Good afternoon, Dan. So my understanding is then that you would be competing against a mother for sites that are being built in other municipalities that have a competitive tax uh, rate. I'd like to know where that is. I mean, there are projects now, I'd say all over southern and even central Alberta that, um, you know, cover a, a wide range of different municipalities. And when we're asking for this relaxation, it's not in the context of we don't agree with your tax rates um, from that perspective. I mean, I think, you know, we view the county of Newell as having fair tax rates. And, and I understand there's been even some relaxations made around um, COVID-19. And so, and, and really tax is only a portion of, you know, what makes each project competitive. So, so when we ask for this, it's really in the context of, um, you know, we're, we're pulling every lever we can here, um, you know, to make the project as, as competitive as possible. And, and you know, to the, to the extent that there are opportunities outside of our, you know, sort of direct control, um, that's where this ask is coming from. And we are aware that this would make a, a meaningful difference on the competitiveness of the project. And so that's, so that's why we're coming to you with this request. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, the, the projects cover, cover locations which have, you know, I, I think higher rates in some cases and, and lower rates in some cases um, and similar rates in some cases. But, but, but really it's the sort of totality of all the different inputs on a project that, that sort of determine its competitiveness. Other questions for Dan? Um, Kevin, or is, is Matt on? The, are you there, Matt? Yes, you are there. Um, I don't know who this is a question for. This is a project that hasn't been built and isn't operating at the present time. So when does the tax uh, cost come into play? Yeah, so I think on on the linear stuff, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's the end of October. Um, so anything that's live by the end of October makes it into the next year's property tax uh, tax bill. So. so it would have to be up and operating in totality by the end of October this year. Yeah, that's my understanding. I I defer to uh, our assessor on that, and I can I can get uh, the details back for sure. But that's my understanding yeah. that you wait for the switch to be flipped, and uh, if that's okay. done by October, then it goes on for the next year's taxes. Thank you. So, Dan, you're looking into the future more than anything right now. That's correct. We're looking at the life sort of the, you know, if you sort of think it was like a pro forma for the life of the project, which we have to use when we sort of determine, you know, what our economics are today. It's, right. a, yes, it is a, it's a future consideration that we're, that we're most concerned, we're sort of most trying to address right now. Which also makes it for us a look into the future because we, to do, I, I mean, obviously we, probably we'll be having some discussions in regards to economic development and our county and region and what we do for one company, we would be having to do for all. And so we have a lot to look at into the future. We haven't developed a budget yet for next, next year, but we are going to be beginning that work pretty, pretty quick. In fact, our first meeting, I think, is next week. So, um, I mean, I don't think that there's an answer today. We have had lots of, I shouldn't say lots, we have had a number of companies come to us and ask for tax relief, but we don't do one-offs. And so, um, yeah, not, nothing has changed in that regard for the, in the way we do business right now. Understood. 
Yeah, yeah I guess I guess I guess we would we would sort of ho hope to impart that, um, and uh, obviously it's up to you <laughs> and the county and how you sort of manage your budget. But you know, I think this is a really great economic development opportunity, and certainly I think the county of Newell is sort of at the forefront, um, having the first project. And you know, I know others sort of within within your boundaries and um, can be a way to sort of set you know set set yourselves apart. Um, even further from from other jurisdictions to to sort of ensure that you know, more projects and more revenues sort of come come in the future. And and that is certainly a discussion we we will be having more more of, I believe. Um, Clarence, Councillor from Rolling Hills. Well, Dan, it it kind of. Um striking that when I look at competitive tax rates and I understand fully what, what what you're trying to do because your bids haven't been competitive. You can sum of your costs, of course you can lower your bids. I look around at where where you might get a more competitive tax rates and there aren't very many places. And if you go with the 20%, there would probably be only three jurisdictions in the province that have, would have a lower tax rate. Now there's only 12 and there's 50 that are higher. We're pretty competitive. Yeah. We're very I, I, competitive. I, I and that, that bugs me a little bit, Dan. You know that you would look to us who have already given you a very competitive rate where the sun shines just about all as much as anywhere else. Yeah, and I'm, I'm kind of a little back by it. Uh, the same with the points from from what Brian had. I mean, we you go into this with your wide, eyes wide open, and if you didn't look at tax rates, you should have. Uh, you're well aware of what they were because of the first project. So I find it. Uh, a bit underhanded, and a, quite an ask, quite an ask. That's so I appreciate that, Clarence, and 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 um, I think I think it was the response to you the first time. And and as I stated, it's it's not about uh, for us. It's not necessarily us coming to you saying your rates are not competitive. Um, it's really you know for us, it's the totality of all the different factors that make a project competitive. And yeah, sun, sun and resources definitely one. And and you know we've got a project in Brooks and we in, or in the county of Newell, and we you know proposing a second one for a reason. Um, and we definitely think this is a good site. What we're really talking about is sort of you know getting a bit more of a competitive edge um, to to just you know sharpen our pencils in in all different ways. And as I, as I said, some of those we, we have full control over, and we are. And the other ones, um, such as this, is, is the context of why we're, we're making this request of the county. Anything else from council? Other questions or things that you need to know? Seeing, uh, seeing no hands, um, Dan, anything further to add? No, I think I think uh, I think I've summarized everything. I, I really do appreciate um, your time and, and you making time for us to discuss this matter. And and you know we're really really excited about you know the project we already have in the county. And and you know we'd love nothing more than to get this project off the ground uh, as soon as we can. And as I say, it's it's basically a shovel ready project. So um, we really appreciate your consideration on this and 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 hope that it's a sort of overall positive response and, and look forward to discussing further. Thanks, Dan. Um, I, I, just a question when you say it's a shovel ready project. So is it finances that's holding it up? Yeah, as I said in the, in the opening, really the, and, um, really the key piece right now is just getting a power purchase agreement on the project. Okay. So from a, okay. everything else perspective, um, we've everything lined up, fi finances and 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 sort of you know you, you know those will come if there's a if there's a power purchase agreement in place everything else is lined up to follow suit. Okay. Good to good to know. Lionel. 
Hi there, I'm Lionel Just. I'm glad you recognize the fact that we have a, a fair a fair fail rate. Not that is not gonna gouge any any business. And I think we try to maintain that. And I'm glad that you do recognize that. But in my experience in business, Texas was not the area we went to. Because that's, that's not a variable. And we always recognize that ourselves. And it, um, it is just, it's just a fact of life that we us for operations and we always have to accept tax one of them and as they were. We never ever asked for reduction in any of our businesses. And, um, so it'll, it's a little difficult for me to listen to somebody requesting that. Thank you. Thanks, Lionel. Anything else today, Dan? Otherwise, we will um, carry on with our our meeting. And obviously, if we come up with uh, anything, we would be getting in contact with you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks again. Again, appreciate the time. All right. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. All right. Um, our budget meeting is coming up on Tuesday, isn't it? And so perhaps, uh, I don't know if we, we need to have a discussion. As more, more of these cases perhaps come into us, asks, who knows? But, um, is there anything else today? I, I have a, a late agenda item received partway through this lunch hour, actually, and um, I would like to add to the agenda before we call it quits today, if possible. Anybody have any problems with that? It's just to get a letter written. Brian. So I would like to have a little bit more discussion and if we do it a budget in, in regards to this past item that we just deal, dealt with, <clears throat> because I think there is a, I do have some different perspective um, that I've considered and, and uh, I'd like council to, to, to have their input into it too. And I don't mm -hmm. care if it's today or budget day, I don't, I don't I just before we, we reject this wholeheartedly as I get the feeling it's going to be this request. I think we need to have a little bit of discussion about, about it. I, <clears throat> I'm not sure it'll change my mind, but it'll, we'll, I just think we need to talk about it. We can do that now or we can do that at budget time. It doesn't matter to me, Madam Reeve. Yeah, and I just thought that if it's going to be, a, I mean, we're, we've said all along, we're not doing one-offs with tax relief, correct? So I didn't think that would change today, but if it's something um, that we need to talk about more, it will certainly come into play, I think, going forward with our budget. So uh, that was just a thought that we could talk about. I, I don't care, we can talk about it right now if people wanna talk about, about it, but um, what is your wishes, group? Clarence. To me, the, the topic is really, are we going to make it more desirable to do business in the county by lowering the non-residential tax rate? <laughs> Talked about how do we get business to come to the area and tax rate that is the determining factor or one of the determining factors of getting business here. I think uh, when we deal with this particular one here, I'm not sure a, a 
I think he's just grasping at straws some to find out any place that he can put in a more competitive bid so that he gets a power contract. That's basically what it is. So how badly do we want to make sure that they build is, is what we have to ask ourselves and, and prepare to do that universally for all industry and, and attract, maybe attract some more business. The answer is, but I mean, that's, that's the discussion we have. Brian? Yeah, Wayne? You, you said it very well, Clarence. And I guess the, the point that I wanted to bring up is, is referring more, a lot to what we have dealt with in the past and what's it actually costing us as a county once these rural solar facility is built. It is substantially different than a, some of our other non-res taxpayers. Um, if you have oil and gas, they use our roads quite extensively. Um, maybe not to the point where they did 10 or 20 years ago, but there still is a different usage. And I guess that's where, where I was looking at is that, okay, because we have the ability to split out some non-res, is it something we should consider? I really struggle with that because of the things that I said, because they, these people, they came to us for development in the site, and then they're asking for tax relief, which I find is a little absurd, actually. But at the same time, when you look at all non-res that's lumped into the same, should they be all treated the same? Because quite frankly, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin or, or Matt, or even our public work staff, I don't think we have a lot of expense when it comes to a solar facility once they're built. And um, you know, if I compare that to, to ag land and what that same facility is gonna generate for revenue, even if we would give them some tax relief, would be, there would be, it wouldn't even be in the same ballpark. So, you know, are we treating everybody the same? You know, because agriculture does use the roads more than a solar facility. And, um, um, and it could be built on exactly the same property of land, yet we would, can, yet we would collect probably 10, maybe 20 times the taxes that we would on an ag field as opposed to a solar field. And, and I'm not suggesting that, that ag has to pay more, but I do think that maybe some of this some of this has to be reflective of what it's actually costing us to keep that road in a condition that the, the people that are using, that are paying the tax, um, what is our maintenance cost for that to, for to, to, to service those, those, uh, those routes? So I'm just going to leave that with you. I don't think this is something that, that we really need to dig through a whole bunch, but I think we have to give it some thought. Um, it is part of, like Clarence said, part of the economic development process that maybe we should be looking at something that would spur um, <clears throat> a usage that doesn't use the roads as much, whether it's this solar or something else that uh, has a different impact. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Well, well said, well thought out. Interesting concept for sure. Um, we have uh, more information. Kevin, um, your opinion on the meeting or the what you're listening to tomorrow will just be what we think is going to happen, probably, correct? Yeah, Madam Rebo, I think uh, usually when they come out to, uh, to discuss this stuff, the decisions are, I think, fairly well made up from my experience on uh, public consultation, so I think there's a range of uh, implications for us that uh, that are put forward. Uh, you know, as as much as a 32 percent or 31 percent hit on non-res, if if uh, if the oil and gas industry gets the top end of that scale, so we got we've got a lot of issues. I think. Uh, you know, coming forward, we always we already faced the 35 percent of the shallow gas, and uh, yeah, there, it, it's going to be some really dip, difficult decisions for us that we're going to have to prioritize, uh, not only operationally but capital. You know, with regards to this proposal, I think um, when I spoke to Dan, I told him that we can't really treat 
one solar company different than the rest? I said, I don't, there's an, uh, an, uh, an appetite to provide them with 30 or 40 years of 20% reduction because there's all kinds of other ratepayers that uh, I'll be watching that. So, but the one thing I think that I do support is looking at an incentive to attract development, whether they use roads or not, um, so that, but on the short term, right over a four year window or something, not something that you're going to carry from council to council, because I think that would be, would be unfair to future councils. But I do, I do think the concept should be discussed and, and looking at ways to do it. Um, whether, you know, whether they use rec facilities, do they pay the rec tax, you know, so lots of people don't use rec facilities. It's a dangerous game to decide who funds what between budgets and assessments, I think, from, from my view, but I do support certainly looking at uh, long-term vision because we need to grow. We haven't, I mean, I've said to council before, our assessments today uh, are less than they were in 2009, you know, with, with the shallow gas reductions, and, and it sounds like they're going to go even down worse than that, probably, I don't know, probably back down to the late 90s. You know, if this 30% goes through or 20% goes through on oil and gas, it's going to be a different municipality. And thank goodness that, you know, council has had the vision that you've had over the past long term for the water and, and the highways and the roads and the drainage. And because I think those those budgets are going to change if, if I'm reading this right. It's not all doom and gloom. I think we'll, we'll, ma we'll manage somehow, but it's not going to be the same. So for for Tuesday's meeting, would those be some of the things we'll be talking about? Like possibly, Matt, projections and um, as much information as we can uh, realize to put together a budget and to talk about the implications? Yeah, we, we had kind of flagged the whole tax incentive thing as one of the items that we might like to unpack a little bit with uh, with council. I know in Kevin's package, he's he's made a note similar to his comments today. Um, the recent updates to the MGA uh, put in place the ability to put tax incentives on non-residential property into place. And it, it gives you pretty broad uh, abilities to target where you want those incentives to go. So I think it might be valuable to, uh, to unpack that a little bit. Um, I was glad, I don't want to say I was glad to see the email from RMA because that's that's our wild card really right now is where are things going to shake out with that assessment model review and uh, what are our options to uh, to respond to that. So I'm really interested to see where that shakes out. but. Um, I'm like Kevin, it'll be a, a different municipality, but we are positioned very well to respond and to uh, maintain a semblance of stability um, as these curveballs get thrown at us. I think we're in really great shape in terms of our reserves, our debt capacity. Um, we've, we've got some room where we have uh, saved for future projects that we, we can consider uh, options for, for kicking some of that stuff around on on Tuesday. So really what, what I, I'm hoping we get out of uh, Tuesday's meeting is uh, the tone. What's the tone in the community? What are you hearing from uh, your rate payers? What are their expectations of the county moving forward? Uh, and that will inform what we ultimately bring uh, as a final information package for our budget review meetings in October kind of thing. So we might not have all of the, uh, the data or the answers on Tuesday, but we'll be feverishly taking down the notes of everything you'd like to see for that uh, October set of meetings where we ultimately get uh, an interim budget into place. So is that enough discussion for today then, Brian? I think that's, that's excellent. Um, I think Matt, uh, Wayne had a, Wayne was waving his hand around. Oh, here. he was. <laughs> it's Brian. My this point that I wanted to make, Molly, was that, and I understand we we don't want to do these one-offs, but 
maybe we got to change how we do things like oil and gas because they do use the roads maybe we charge them a different rate if we don't change we're going to lose some of these projects and that's going to hurt us and i think we have to really put our mind around this where we want to go because uh we're going to lose assessment we're going to lose dollars and we got to figure a way to keep as much of that as possible and changing the rates for certain industries maybe that's where we go maybe we have a, a specific rate for s solar because like brian made the point they don't use the roads once it's all up and ready to go whereas other industries do so i think we have to get our mind around that and decide where we're going to go because uh and i think that's a progressive way that a lot of these municipalities we're going to have to go if we want to keep operating at the standard we are now thanks wayne anything else on this topic until tuesday clarence it's a bit not quite this topic but since we're talking about the budget meeting and i'm just thinking back on an earlier remark about pictures being taken or something can somebody enlighten me on the, what's in oh. store <laughs> yes it's just one picture of a presentation brooks bandits oh, presenting okay. it with a jersey um they had requested that and brian and i were going to be involved we just waited we we're going to be in town some days so you don't even have to put on any extra makeup, Councillor Amulon, because I, I think it's just Brian and I for that. Because it's here. Super. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, if there's nothing else, the, what I would want to uh, just get done today so that it's out it's always fast when you get requests for uh, it's a letter of support from global village that i just received regarding a, a new round of funding for calls for proposal and mental health and well-being and they um we've written them we wrote them a letter in the past for this as did the city and they actually have received money and they have their healing path wellness center for newcomers so they're just going after some more money so i'm wondering if it'd be possible if we could put together a letter of support for that and if so someone could pass make a motion brian um i move that the reeve write an excellent letter as she always does to uh to support the global villages request Thanks, Brian. All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. We'll promise an excellent letter. In fact, I might promise a more of an Ariana letter. <laughs> Who else? Somebody has their hand up? No? Ellen, did you have a question? No, I just voted uh, in favor by raising my hand. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. I'm not visible <laughs> still. Right, right. Anything else today? No? All right. I guess if not, we can uh, adjourn. And I don't, I'm not saying a time because <laughs> my computers all have different times to my clock. My 140. 40. Thanks. 140. Thanks. Uh, Marie, thanks everyone.